Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. I have a really powerful topic I'm going to be sharing on today that I know will be really enlightening and empowering for everyone who's listening. So whether you're here listening to the recording or the podcast, hello. And to those of you who are joining live, welcome. Um, I've been doing this podcast for, uh, it's been a couple years now. Um, every topic has been, you know, something I find very powerful. That's something I'm really enthusiastic about. But today's, um, I think, is so timely. And I think is something that um, it, it's just a needed reminder right now. It's a point of where we access our power, let go of the drama that's happening out there, because we remember that we are powerful in what is getting created in our life and in our world. And so this is a way to show up powerfully, to show up in your own alignment. So you uh, you actually are the difference that you're wanting to see in the world and the difference that you know is ready to happen in the world. So I would love to hear where you're tuning in from. For everyone who is joining live, hello. Thank you for being here. All right, hi Lucy and Shamar and okay other people coming in. Um, so this topic is actually something that I shared on the, the quantum, uh, the quantum healing collective, the quantum healing collaborative. A friend Kyle of mine invited me to speak last summer. Um, they have an amazing, powerful local community in near the Cape in Massachusetts. And I was out there. They're now meeting virtually. So it's something everyone all over the world can take uh, advantage of and participate in the Quantum Healing Collective. I've shared the Facebook group that they have for that that group. But I, I did this interview with um, Joe, who's one of the um, the members of that group. And this is exactly what came out of it right at the very end. And I thought, whoa, that was a really rich kind of four-step process that I could do a whole um, session on. And that's what I'm doing here today is this piece about how embracing darkness allows us to be more light. And it's really about how embracing, not fighting against the powerlessness we feel, the fear that we feel, the uncertainty, embracing it is actually what accesses us to our true power. Our true power is not out there fighting against this, changing that, fixing that, moving around the parts. Our true power is when we connect in here. And this is the most powerful way to do that, whether it's for self-healing in the body, whether it's for uh, really letting a difference be made in the world that we awaken into um, a whole new way of doing our life, recreating our systems, because the systems we've been in are very low frequency systems, our systems of healthcare, education, finances, um, all of the major systems that, that we've been in, our media systems, they um, are from a frequency, a consciousness of separation, fear, and lack. When we see our body as purely physical and not vibrational, uh, we actually kind of subscribe to this and we have to play there, meaning I got to push that boulder up the hill and work harder and do more and really bust my butt if I want to make a change. When we remember that we are vibrational, <laughs> The whole game changes. So um, yes, we are creating new systems. We are witnessing the collapse of all of those systems like over the last 10, 20, 30 years. And in the next 10 or 20 or 30 seconds, we're really gonna see a completion of that where um, a lot more awareness comes out of what's actually been going on behind the scenes with all these systems and uh, how we're not, uh, <laughs> We've not been in our power. We've believed that we're powerless. So I'm going to share a, a process that is a really powerful way to go through this period of time where there's a lot of fear, powerlessness, and uncertainty and move into something higher. So hello, Ellen from Toronto, Lucy from New York, Hashfa, Hafsa from India, Richard from Montana, Shamar says, no one ever says my name right. Thank you. Paloma from the UK. Awesome. And then I have Lucy. We just touched on how to be with all the injustices in the world and my giving up the need to personally engage with writing them. Yep. 
So a lot of people have taken on that torch of like, I'm going to write the injustices of the world. But if we're doing it from separation and powerlessness, we actually are in the same frequency where the problem exists. You know, and the Einstein quote I love to share is Einstein said, we can't solve the problem in the same frequency. Uh, we can't find the solution in the same frequency where the problem exists. All right. Uh, hello, Christina from Boston, Rachel from UK, Annika from Sweden, Roxy from, <laughs> oh, and it's snowy. Oh, that's, yeah, in Canada. Uh, hello, in Phoenix, Arizona, a lot of Arizona peeps. All right, so thank you guys for being here. <clears throat> and I've got... Uh, <laughs> Sunny Arizona, Diogo from Brazil, uh, Nerns from South Africa. Awesome. We have our international group meeting each week <laughs> at 11 a.m. Wednesday, Mountain Time. All right. So this first piece is where is your actual power? I just had a really beautiful private session with a woman who um, a lot of themes of powerlessness have been getting her attention. Things happening in politics, things, um, you know, different themes about different cultural things going on. It's triggering this feeling of, wow, I feel powerless to make a change in the world. Well, it's never true that we're powerless, but we can play it out and live it as if I'm powerless. Things are happening. I have no ability to make a change, whether it's with an illness or other areas of life. It's kind of all connected. And what I shared with her to bring her back into this power, and actually I, I'm gonna find out if I can share the clip we did for the exercise we did together um, uh, you know, publicly, and we'll, we'll email it out if you're on my email list at drkimd.com. Um, Cause we've been sending some really beautiful audios from some private sessions I've been doing. Um, but to actually access where is my power? What we've seen scientifically that really lights me up is that your body is a machine. It's a powerful technology. And because the truth is we're not separate and we're not primarily physical, we are connected and we are primarily vibrational, we can actually move into a whole different power center where we do impact everyone everywhere now. But the way we do that is by coming into our own wholeness and embracing that darkness where we feel powerless. Um, so <laughs> E said, knowing and believing that I'm vibrational has made me worse because now I feel such a level of self-loathing that is indescribable. My illness must be my fault. Yes. Yeah, so when we have the awareness, we can either make ourselves wrong or remember, oh, I'm vibrational. <laughs> my vibration is going to create my experience. What if I'm willing to choose the vibration of I am unwilling to make myself wrong under any circumstances? This was a big theme that came up for this woman because her daughter is super, super empathic and sensitive. And she could, you know, feel any frequencies that this woman is holding uh, and, and respond and react against that. And because she was making herself wrong, she didn't want that awareness. She didn't want that sensitivity. No, no, just, you know, can you just roll with the flow here and not show me that mirror? But if we actually want to awaken, we want that sensitivity, but we must be willing, unwilling to make ourselves wrong under any circumstances. This is actually a really powerful um, video I shared in the Embracing Health group for anyone who's in that group that it's a year long program. Um, it's in there and it was, empath to awakened, an awakened master. How do you master that level of sensitivity um, in, in your own awakening <laughs> versus be like, oh, I don't want to be so sensitive and see all of this because I'm just going to blame myself and make myself wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. We've got more awesome people from all around the world joining. So hello, Christy from Edinburgh, Scotland. Very exciting. Karen from UK. All right, Lucy said, I often play myself, play myself from my illness to, but trying to believe, oh, I often blame myself for my illness, but I'm trying to believe that you can truly hear yourself when the swelling in the body is getting worse and you see the changes in your feet and your hands and the difficulty to do things every day. Yes, yeah, so then the powerlessness gets more of your attention. It affirms, I really am powerless. This really is getting 
worse. There really is nothing I can do. And so it's a matter of, will I remember, okay, even though I'm having this experience in my body, even though X, Y, and Z is happening in the world, even though so-and-so is saying that thing and I feel powerless and I could use it to strengthen the argument that it's true or remember that everything is either happening to me or for me. And it's I who have the choice. Will I receive this and there's a gift in it or will I continue to make it wrong and reject it? So this is another major key. All right, so here are these four steps from mm, this process I shared with Joe in his awesome podcast a couple months ago. And the first thing is, you know, when the heaviness, powerlessness, fear comes up, whether it's like um, Lucy said, I've got this illness, this and this is getting wrong. You know, how does that feel? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel impossible? Do, do you feel powerless? Do you feel victimized? What comes up? The first thing for me, and for me, sometimes there's themes of fear, it's not okay, inadequacy. These are energies. They can rise, arise in all of us. Um, so how do I meet that? So the first thing for me is to remember What's actually happening is that this is part of an awakening. I am in a cycle of expansion. And the first part of that expansion is this awareness of all the unwanted things, or it could be the awareness of inspiration of the wanted things. Like, whoa, I could be that free. Oh, that'd be awesome. I could have this abundance. And, oh, I'd love to go to that place. Either one, inspiration or desperation. It's the same thing. It's you are ready to step into something higher in your experience. So where you are will either feel low and heavy or depending on where you're at, you'll feel the lightness of like, whoa, something bigger is coming in. Yeah, cool. A lot of times, you know, it'll be both or it seems to feel heavy all the time. There's an expansion happening. But the number one piece of this four step process is I've got to be aware of like, whoa, this is an awakening. Something's ready to shift. If I don't have that, then it's like, oh, another problem I have to deal with. Oh, another thing. Or, oh, I feel down again. I thought I got over this. Didn't I already deal with this thing? I don't want to feel this again. So this can be uncomfortable. The beginning of the expansion process, we're being invited to something new, but sometimes we're really anchored into where we are, the belief systems that go with it. While not expansive, they may be very comfortable, <laughs> but we're going to start feeling the pain of staying where we are. So that's the first thing is like actually get, whoa, all the fallout. You know, my sister just had a tree fall on their house and it was right after like something else happened. You know, they have all this drama things, but they're like, you know what? Life is shaking it up for us. Something's happening. And they actually received it as a gift because it is. Uh, but you can imagine people go, oh, God, one more thing I have to deal with. My life's just getting harder and harder. Life's either happening to me or for me. The second piece for me, this is the most important, is to know why. What is it actually creating for me to go beyond my comfort zone and expand into something else? And this is why it's helpful you know, right now do this exercise, but for me, at least every year, I get more clarity on what am I ready to step into now? What am I actually ready to step into or go beyond? And for me, these distractions of being busy, doing more, helping people, taking care of things, taking care of the family, um, that's actually old, okay? I'm not here to take care of everyone. I'm here to be in my own wholeness so we all win, so we all live in our highest level of connection and joy. And so letting go of these old perspectives I had about what I'm really here to do, who do I need to be, and truly step into as I live in my own connection with self and let myself be free, all beings everywhere benefit. To feel my connection with everyone and everything to feel that connection and love. That is my highest intention. So each year, you know, for me, I will do it each year and get clear on like, what, what am I creating this year? What am I ready to step into? It's not goals. I want to make sure this happens and I want to make, you know, I want to do this thing. 
It's more, I'll listen to the calling of my heart. What am I ready for? What's this year about? What am I stepping into? And get some clarity and consciousness of that. So when shit hits the fan and it feels contracted and it feels heavy and the dark stuff starts to be revealed, I have the awareness of like, oh, this is all the stuff that's in the way that's ready to come up and be embraced so that I'm embracing this. This thing I've already gotten connected with. This thing I've already had some clarity of. This thing I've already said yes and committed to. And so that is what is the deepest calling of my heart that I'm actually ready to receive now in my life. So that's step two is know why. So, so then you have that in your awareness somewhere like, whoa, maybe this is all falling away to create space for that because that's always what's happening. <laughs> the third thing is to choose to be here now in the darkness, in the heaviness, in the fear, in the unwanted experience, circumstance, or situation. Because non-resistance is one of the things that lets this whole cycle of expansion move fluidly. If I'm in resistance, oh no, I don't want to feel this. Let me distract myself so I feel better. Oh, I don't want to feel this. Let me go find the right book to read or a therapist to see or a person who can help me. And I'm not saying therapy is a bad thing or any of those things are bad things. I'm saying when we use it to escape or fix, overcome, we're not presencing what's ready to move. So I'm not saying don't take any of those actions. I'm saying first get here now so you access your power. Then you have the clarity of, oh, yeah, let me take this step and work with that person. Oh yeah, let me change my diet. Those will be nutritious foods for me. Oh, let me read that book and spend some time with that. Oh, let me do this new thing. We can't have clarity until we've chosen to be here now with what is, because that's what lets it move so clarity can come in. So the third piece is choose to be here with what is as it is. 10 breaths, presencing the energies that are arising. So there's what's happening and then there's what's my experience. What's happening is, uh, well, I look at my bank account and I don't like the number. And what I experience is <gasps> tightness in my solar plexus, tension in my neck and, and shoulders, fear rising up in my body. Okay. That's quote real what's really happening. Okay. We think what's really happening. I'm running out of money. What's really happening? Uh, my partner is leaving me. What's really happening? The world is falling apart. <laughs> Who knows what the mind makes it mean. But what's actually happening is it's right here, right now, inside me. That is always more real than all the fabrications of the mind of what's going on outside. So that's the third piece is to meet what's here now and choose to be with what is as it is. Ten breaths. Get curious and look. And then the fourth step is, this is so big for me. Remember my power. Remember my power. Remember that those 10 breaths can shift the freaking planet. Remember my power. That meeting myself in this moment instead of distracting or escaping is what makes all the difference in my body, in my nervous system, in my cells, in my electromagnetic transmission, and in all beings everywhere because, oh yeah, we are connected. We're not separate. We are all here in this now moment where we can feel each other, connect with each other, receive from each other. Remember my power. Remember that it actually matters. It matters so much that I choose to do this instead of run, fix, and escape. So get what's actually going on, number one. Whoa, this is heavy. Oh, yeah, it's because I'm in a massive awakening, ready to receive everything that I've been asking for. Number two, what is it I'm actually asking for that is so, so worth receiving? that it's worth sitting with this unthinkable heaviness. So that's clarity. 
what is it that would be so worth it? If, if, you're, if your second piece there, your why isn't big enough, make it bigger, make it bigger. And ask your heart, sit with your heart for take an hour. What is it I'm actually ready to step into that would be so beautiful and amazing and unthinkable that it's absolutely worth feeling this heaviness and letting it dissipate. Um, so that that second piece, and this is like I said, it's not the mind and the goals. Well, I guess I'd have a nicer house and more people to hang out with. You know, it's more of that like, oh, you've got to connect with your heart. That's why I said take an hour, really sit and presence yourself. Let it come through you. Three, choose to be with what is as it is. Sit with 10 breaths and let the energy emerge. As you cultivate that willing presence, it could be 10 seconds. Sometimes it's 10 hours, but I mean, it's decades and decades worth of stuff moving through. So sit with it, you know, as you work, as you breathe, as you go about your day, be willing to sit with it. And then the last one is remember your power. You have no freaking clue how unbelievable, unbelievably powerful you are, that when you connect with yourself this way, it shifts the planet. Now we've been taught, uh, we're not, we've been taught we're separate, we're limited, and that we're vulnerable. So fear, lack, separation, that's what we learn. That's not our nature, not the truth of who we are. It's stuff we learned. Yes, we're playing in a physical body, in a physical realm, and it's awesome. But don't lose sight of the fact that you're not this body. It's like if we all went into a virtual reality game, you're like, oh, I'll see you in there. And then my virtual reality avatar is interacting with your virtual reality heart. And then we begin to think, this is who I really am. And this is who you really are. And if you die or get hurt, oh, no. And you're like, wait, no, I'm here. It's me. That's just my avatar. Oh, yeah, all is well. It's good. We're in a virtual reality. So I'm not my body. But the I am that comes through me and the I am that comes through you are connected. When we remember that connection, we regain our power. <laughs> Thank you, Mills. <laughs> We've got uh, then Dr. Duramo. How can we consider our shadow self connecting with our ego mind and subconscious mind? to be considered as our dark side. Yes, can we consider our shadow self to be our dark side? Yes, that's exactly what we're talking about, the shadow, the one who thinks I'm limited, I'm vulnerable, I'm separate, I'm small, it's not okay. Okay, you don't need to fix that one, but presence the truth so that that can resolve, so you know that's not who you actually are. Someone in Facebook said it's so exhilarating to actually meet yourself where you're at, where you are. It took a long time for me to let go of fear. Me too. I mean, I'm still letting go of little, little threads of it, little threads and, and experiencing more and more and more clarity and more and more and more abundance every single day. And it's amazing right now because it's like we're two seconds away from such a massive, massive awakening where people really begin to see the truth. Because this lie we're living, that we're separate, that we're physical, that we're in lack, um, we've learned it. It's been taught to us. Who would want to teach us that? <laughs> we're going to begin to see a lot more because there's so many things that have bewildered me forever. And now there's more clarity on what's actually behind them, what's actually going on. And it's like, oh, my God, it's so easy to see once you see it. But when we're asleep and we think, I just got to stay busy. Uh, we don't see anything. So it's the choice to be versus busy. <laughs> to be, I know my power, just my presence emanates a, the most powerful electromagnetic message of light that allows all beings everywhere to connect more fully with who they are and with their power. So yes, we will, we are creating a new world and we are creating new structures. It's already happening. But to let that be everything, you know, that's the tr transition we're in. Uh, or I could be busy. I got to do this and I got to do that. And I got to make sure everybody knows and I got to spread the word. Well, the awakening is not going to happen that way because people who aren't ready to see won't see no matter how much you're spreading the word. And people who are ready to see 
will see no matter what you do or don't do. So my work is really about assisting awakening because when you're awake, you can see and there's clarity and it's all so much easier. Lucy said, right, I do believe I'm going through an awakening. It's just the symptoms are so intense. I get it. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, I can, I can definitely uh, relate with that where it's, it's so intense. You're like, there's no way, there's no way this is okay. There's no way this is part of an expansion process. I have to resist this. And I've, I've witnessed this enough times to realize like, you know, there's no resisting because I know how much it just makes everything so much worse. <laughs> so what if I make space for everything as it is? Someone in Facebook said so much expansion and then a low and crappy week and self pity. But then I realized how low vibe it felt and I was ready to go beyond. Yeah, and going beyond is like to be with it as it is, but with willing presence and breath. That is the entire difference because people will say, oh, I'm just supposed to sit with this and it's just gonna go away. Um, but it's willing presence and breath because just like with a child, if the child's like, I'm not happy. And you're like, oh, come on. I've sat with you for 10 minutes to make you feel better. Why don't you feel better yet? That's not gonna work. But if you're willing, I'm here. It's okay to feel exactly as you feel. I love you. Take all the time you need. You can let that go whenever you're ready. And I'm here and I love you. Take all the time you need. I'm not going anywhere. That's the willing presence that lets the child say, well, okay, I feel better now. Let's go out and play. It's in the child's nature to go out and play. You do not have to force it. And that's the most important thing we can remember about ourselves and about our bodies. Self-healing is the natural result of our willingness to let these energies move and not hold them in. Lucy said, fear and powerless and not worry to heal. I love your techniques. Oh, thank you. Well, the instant elevation program is really powerful for this as far as like, how do I sit with this? How do I let that move? What do I do in my mind body system to let something new integrate? And they're easy, easy, easy tools. You know, um, it's not, <laughs> they can be instant. They can take just a few moments um, to let things move through. <laughs> We've got, uh, I wish I understood. Can you please break this down even further? Yep. All right, hang on. So I want you to feel E and, and everyone here. Um, when the darkness comes up, and I'm not just saying like it's a physical thing, it's, it's a low mood uh, or a thing happening where I'm like, oh, not again. And you start to go into that space, like life is happening to me. And you're not in the space of life is happening for me, right? So there's resistance, we make it wrong. It's just too heavy. So always like feel underneath what's happening. So what's happening? Okay, someone hit my car and now it's damaged. I have to get it fixed. Oh, one more thing. Or someone hit my car and I'll receive this. Wonder if there's a gift in it for me. Who knows? I'll receive everything I need and I'll move through this. I, I got my heart, car hit last week <laughs> in the parking lot and it was the craziest thing because this um, my husband sent me the picture because he went to pick up the car and I was a couple blocks away with the kids. And I was like, oh, geez. And then I felt like, oh, whoever did that. And then I felt compassion, like, oh, whoever did that. Because to do something like that, you know, you, you feel fear and lack. Oh my God, I gotta run away. I hope nobody sees it. And I sent that person some love. And, and I was in a space of joy and with my kids were safe hey, come on, we, this thing we can handle. So I send that person love. And then the next text said, oh, they left a note. And I was like, oh, cool. So um, I called the person. She, she said, I'm a really young driver. I'm a new driver. And her mom signed the note as well. So I thought, oh, this poor kid. Like I've been there, done things like that. I said, hey, this part of the learning process. Sorry you had to go through that. Uh, we'll get it all sorted out. And she wrote back and was like, oh, I'm so sorry. We've been just such a mess over this. We felt terrible. And I was like, no, you know, it happens to the best of us. She probably got really shaken up. Um, you know, it'll be fine. So she was super appreciative of that. 
Meanwhile, she said, um, well, we run this dog sled operation in town and we'd love to give you guys a free dog sled ride. I was like, awesome. I have two kids. They're going to go bananas over that. Yes. So she said, what's your name? And I'll know when you call to make the reservation. And I told her my name and she goes, I know you. I know you. I was like, how does she know me? Does she like hear my broadcast or see me in my work? And she said, my sister lives in Melrose, Massachusetts, which is right outside of Boston, across the street from your sister. I was like, what? So anyway, there was that whole tie that both of these women in Melrose have sisters out in Durango. And they're like, oh, maybe they'll meet. Yeah, yeah, we met. <laughs> anyway, the point is, receive what's happening. And you don't ever know where it's going to lead. So I, I still don't know what will come of, of that um, exchange. You don't know. But you can let it be a contribution to you and to your world. Um, so how do we, so the heaviness comes up, right? So say you're like in the life is happening to me energy. And you're like, oh, my car got hit. God, now I got to do this on top of everything else I already have to do. And then there's going to be an expense and will I be okay? And maybe I'm already worried about money and blah, blah, blah. So it's an energy. Those thoughts, you may not even hear them. because They're in the background, they're in the subconscious, but you feel the heaviness of like, oh, so step one, get what's going on, especially when you have heaviness that's not shifting like through a day and you're like, oh, this is just not a good day. All right, what's going on? Whoa, there's energy moving. I'm in an awakening process. Two, have the awareness. Remember why, like, oh, this is clearing the space for everything I've been asking for. The joy, the abundance, the love, the freedom that we live in harmony that we all know our power and that we live in a world of, of peace. Or for you, you know, that's like for me. So, so you'll have your own way of saying it, whatever it is for you. Three, I choose to be with what is as it is. And I take those 10 breaths because I realize like there's only one place to let this energy shift and it's in me. It's not scrambling and making sure we call the insurance and making sure I get what I need and not actually going to create freedom. I'm not saying you don't do those things. I'm saying when you meet your life with presence, you'll have the energy, the power, and the clarity to do the actions that create abundance. And then the last one is remember your power, that it actually does matter, that it actually does transmute everything that's happening in your reality, everything that's happening in your cells and in your DNA. It is the best kept secret in medicine. I had a program called The Best Kept Secret in Medicine we did several years back. I think it might still be on the website somewhere. <laughs> and it's like, the truth is you are powerful. And we've not been told that. We've been taught that we're powerless. And when we live life as if that's true, we suffer. So we feel the heaviness and we're trying to be more light. But that doesn't work. I can only actually allow more light through by embracing the heaviness. So I hope that is helpful. <laughs> Lucy, how do you deal with the fear and doubt that letting go, like holding on to the hurt by someone that you so want to let go of? How do you deal with fear and doubt? Same thing. Same thing. How does one be with the one who's desperate to let go and knows that the mind isn't the one doing the letting go, but just wants freedom already. Yes, yeah, so impatience, impatience, holding on to the wrongness of these insults and injustices. Yes, so that's it, that's the darkness. So be with that. Okay, this is what's coming up to be met. The need to let go, I wanna, I wanna let go. Urgency, impatience. So that's the darkness that's arising. Okay, there's a reason this is coming into my experience. This is actually part of my awakening. So that's step one. <laughs> no, why? Oh, yeah, I remember. There's a reason this is all happening, that the shit is hitting the fan. There's a reason this is falling away. This is getting my attention because it is no longer resonant with who I'm choosing to be. Okay. Number three, be with what is as it is. Everything in you just wants to make this better and let it go already and get beyond it. Okay, oh, we're not going there. 
I'm going to be with what is as it is. Breathe in and out at least 10 breaths. If it takes 10 hours, keep breathing consciously through the 10 hours. And then lastly, remember your power. There is a point of power here. Neelam said, I was in the Embrace, Embrace Health program with you. I love to listen to you here to refresh the tools. I was almost ready to sign up for the Be The Medicine. However, I didn't have time for it in the schedule, waiting to attend it next year. Cool. Yeah, the Be The Medicine program is really, really powerful. Some unbelievable practitioners are in there. So um, it's really been yeah, I'm so glad I've been running that program. E, great question. How is this a gift if I continue to get worse? Many people get sick and don't get better. So when I'm in resistance, and first of all, I'm not saying that illness is wrong. And if you continue to be ill, you must be in resistance. It's not true. But when we're suffering, struggling, oh, just it won't change. There's always resistance. And so, yeah, we're going to continue to get worse until we see it. And so the gift is life is not going to quit on me. It's going to keep knocking on the door until I finally open and come into resolution. For me, when I had a severe autoimmune immune illness, I tried to heal myself. I tried to heal myself. I tried to heal myself. And it wasn't until I finally really looked at what's right about this I'm not getting. Because I was getting worse and getting worse and getting worse and getting worse. <sighs> It brought up hopelessness, powerlessness, despair, fear. Okay, so what's right about this I'm not getting? And life was telling me, stop fighting your life. Because I was trying to fix my body so I could get on, back on the track, get back on my regularly scheduled program and do the thing. Achieve, <laughs> overcome. Right. When life was like, ah, nope. So what's right about that? I wasn't getting the fact that it kept getting worse and getting worse is life is like, no, you're not going down that road. Your life is not meant to be an uphill battle of trying and trying and proving, improving and being more. Your life is not a self improvement curriculum. <laughs> I didn't get it until I did. <laughs> and so thankfully it kept getting worse for me. Life's either happening to me or for me. It kept getting louder for me. So there was nowhere else to go. I couldn't overcome it and keep moving on. I had to look. Uh, fighting for justice does not mean fighting against others. Yep. Yep. And it has to start with be the light you wish to see in the world. Where am I in my own judgment? Where am I in my own fear? Because that's going to be reflected. I will be so incredibly powerful to be a stand for justice when I more fully embody that within myself. Then I'm unstoppable. Everything I do will anchor in love, abundance, joy, freedom, and fairness in the world. Everything I do. Um, Lucy said, thank you, beautiful Kim. I heard Carolyn Mice refer to power as energy. Would you agree or add to that? Everything is energy. Everything is energy. Our thoughts are energy. When we're in our power, we get way more energy, vitality, joy. The body can heal. But this is true power, not, you know, the ego power. Neelam said, this is what I needed to hear today. I had so much come up in September, and I was, was why I, all the challenges are, res oh, and I was, why is all this challenge resurfing? The amazing thing is I can see the fear coming and then feeling it in the belly and being present. Now I know I just have to sit with it and embrace it. Cool. Oh, Lily, thank you for asking this. When you say sit with it for 10 hours, is that sitting for 10 hours straight? No, be with it, presence it while I'm working, while I'm doing my day, while I'm driving my car. Okay, there you are. There's space for you. I breathe in and breathe out as long as it's there. So I'm doing my day. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm doing a broadcast. Like there is a part of me that keeps my awareness in my body anchored here. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm here. And if there are little threads of discomfort or fear or mm, there's lots of stuff <laughs> that actually keeps me in harmony, that I'm willing to be with what is as it is, that allows everything to be lighter. Um, that allows me to be in power 
in every moment <laughs> instead of um, reacting to the fear because I'm suppressing it and I can't meet it. So thanks for asking that. You know, maybe you're going to sit for, for 10 hours. Um, I know Clint Rogers, who I interviewed a few weeks ago, sat for like 30 days of silence, <laughs> had a chef come and cook at the house. He's done the 10-day the Vipassana retreat and it changes life. And he's done lots of time in silence and stillness. I've actually, I haven't really talked about this much, but I've done uh, an hour a day of silence and stillness over a period of the last few months. And um, the reason I did it was because I really was committed to meeting myself more fully because I knew that the only thing that can be missing in my life is more of me showing up. And I was really aware of what's missing <laughs> or what felt like it was missing. And so coming into wholeness around that, uh, and it's been pretty powerful. <laughs> so, all right, everyone, I love you. I'm here every week at 11 a.m. Mountain uh, Kathy said, how can one not be afraid of not healing low frequency tinnitus that can drive you crazy? Yeah, it seems like, well, if I fear it, I'll make it go away. If I fear it, I'm more likely to take action and fix it. But that's a lie. So that's a lie. When we're in fear, we're in powerlessness. So it doesn't mean I'm not in action or I'm not proactive. In fact, I have way more energy and way more clarity to do whatever the body really needs to come back into harmony. But when I'm in fear, I just go down the spiral of, it'll get worse, it'll get worse. And um, that's the big delusion is that fear is powerful. Fear will let us take action. Fear will make something happen. It's never true. And if you don't, you gotta find this in your own experience. You can't just take my word for it. It either resonates as true for you or try it out yourself, spend a year Fearing your tinnitus will get wor will get worse, and then witness what happens, and then spend a year knowing that despite it's getting worse, all right, it's okay. Let me make space for this. Let me allow what comes up—the powerlessness, the fear, the anger—to come up and to breathe it, so that I stay present and take action from clarity, and then see what gets created. The biggest lie we've been sold <laughs> is that being in peace means inaction. Uh, the lie that only fear will allow proactive action. It's not true. All right. <laughs> I'm going to look at a couple more questions. The den. I have another question. I, I used to listen to death metal music to numb out the pain. I stopped last year to listen to it after 30 years. Sometimes I crave going back to it like a junkie and drunk person. Can I still have my awakening and listen to that low vibration music? Um, maybe. If you notice you're going to it to numb the pain because you think you can't meet it, get curious. Hmm. Well, what would happen if I do meet it? Let me just try for 10 minutes. Let me try for 10 days. And look, is it true? What happens when I think I can't meet it, but I do it anyway, instead of going to the distraction? And then don't make it wrong. Don't make the distraction wrong. When I gave up coffee years ago, I would make a cup of coffee every day if I wanted it. And I'd sit it right next to my desk. Okay, Kim, you want the coffee? Have the coffee. It was there. I didn't make it wrong. But my commitment was to not to have free, be free from caffeine, from coffee. And I had a very strong commitment. But it was like, we're not going to make this wrong. I wouldn't necessarily say that's how everyone should do it. But for me, it was like, you're free. You can choose whatever you want. And what will you choose? So from that place of non-resistance, it was, I never sipped and never touched it. Never even looked at it. It was just there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because for sure it feeds my shadow self. Yeah, so if you know it feeds your shadow self, embrace that. And if I choose it, I choose it. But at least I choose it with awareness. Because if I choose it, like, okay, I'm going to eat the whole chocolate cake because I want to drown out my sorrows because I just can't face them. Okay, do it. But instead of eating the chocolate cake and loathing yourself for it, making yourself wrong, eat the chocolate cake and just say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes, you're doing this sabotaging behavior. I love you. I love you. I love you. Because the state of love, you cannot continue to sabotage when you come into a higher frequency. 
you will always continue to sabotage when you make yourself wrong. So if you're like, oh, I just can't handle it. All right. Tell yourself, right? Listen to it. Have it. But love yourself all the while. And I guarantee you, you will not be able to continue to listen to it because you won't be resonant with it anymore. <laughs> Did you do the hour of silence and meditation or carrying on with your day? Oh, it was st stillness and silence. Close my eyes, meditation. So I breathe in, I breathe out, and I just take an hour each day to be with myself, not for the purpose of clearing my mind or really anything other than just to connect with myself more fully. That is the only purpose of why I'm doing it. All right, I will share more about that, Anne. <laughs> and I, I'll do that in a um, in the Mind Body community in a video or in a broadcast um, next week because I think this is really one of the most important things we can cultivate right now is a deeper connection with ourselves because our true self, our higher self, is so not but into fear and so not but into the delusion, and it does show us the way beyond it. I mean, you will get the clarity, but you got to meet the the fear first. All right, I love you guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. <laughs> All right. I'll be here each week at 11 a.m. Mountain, um, sending you really, really good intentions uh, for this time. I know it's uh, it can be really challenging. There's a lot of flux and a lot of change. I would say the one thing I will leave you with is remember that you are powerful. Even if you learn you're not, even if you see proof of the fact that you're not, even if whatever, your system knows I am unthinkably powerful. And when I reside in the space and, and meet it, all things are possible. All right. I love you guys. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Bye.